Hi, I'm Martha. I've done some uh, videos in the past on making baskets, but today I'm going to go back to my first love, which is quilting. I'm going to show you how to make a scrap log cabin tote bag. And so we're going to work on that today. I'm going to do this in two segments. The first one is going to be how to make the actual log cabin blocks. And then the second part will be how to take those blocks and make them into a tote bag. Now, we're going to need 28 log cabin blocks and we're gonna use scraps. But I want to make sure right from the beginning that we differentiate between the traditional log cabin block and this modified log cabin block that we're going to use. The reason is because if you used a traditional one, your um, tote bag will be humongous. And this toes, uh, minimizes the block just a little bit so that it's not quite so big and it works out perfect for this tote bag. This one, the traditional one, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. Whereas this modified block has one, two, three, four, five, six across, one, two, three, four, five, six up and down, okay? Now, not to confuse you, if you follow my instructions, you'll be fine. I simply mention this because those of you who are well acquainted with the log cabin block, might just say, okay, I need 28 log cabin blocks and then end up with a great big, huge tote bag. Okay, first thing you need is scraps. All of them are one and a quarter inch and I have a box here. Whenever I have a leftover fabric, I just cut them, put them into the box and then when the box is full or half full, I start working on a new project. Then you need black fabric, and you need one half yard of the black fabric and cut into one and one quarter inch strips. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to move to the sewing machine and we're gonna get started. We're going to start out with one strip of the black, and we're going to have several different colors that we're gonna to add to this and be sure to put in on your quarter inch presser foot if you have one or whatever method you use to make sure you have a quarter inch seam. That's what we want. So we're going to go along. We want a variety and so we don't want too much of any one color. The colors that you use at the beginning can also be used at the end. They'll be in a different position. I have pressed these and now I'm going to Stack them up like this, and I'm going to cut across at one and one quarter inch intervals. And it takes 28 to make a bag, but I generally try to make at least 30 so that if you have a problem or you don't like the color or something goes goofy, you can toss that one and have a few spares. It occurred to me that if I filmed from the other direction, my hand wouldn't be in the way. So that's what I'm going to try. Okay, I have a stack of them here. Would you believe it turned out to be exactly 30 once I got them all cut? Anyway, we are ready to add the next color. Now we have uh, A is black, B is colored, so that would be like this. So who, next is C, A, B, C. C would be a colored strip, not a black one. C is a colored strip. 
So we're going to put this one here like this, a colored strip right here, and put them together like this. Now the way to remember this is that the black will always be on the bottom, or the, how would you say, the black, well, this time the black is on the bottom. Okay. So I put the next one on, make sure the black is on the bottom. I have some, uh, some shorter pieces here, basically from the last time that I did this project. Uh, I saved the short pieces that you have after you use the longer strips. I have finished with that particular one, and you are certainly welcome to take this to your cutting board and use a rotary ruler. I tend <laughs> to just want to cut it myself with a pair of scissors, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I will take it to the ironing board and press them all open. When you press these, make sure you press them that the seam goes up and not down, okay? Now we are ready to add the next block. So we have A, B, C, D will come over here. Let's show you. A, B, C, and then D, all right? Now we want to put in the black strip, and this time you don't have to worry about colors, you just simply um, use the black strip for the whole time. And we're going to lay this down so that it's A, B, C, D. That means that the unsewn, unseamed, um, the unseamed piece will be, always be at the top. In other words, the piece that you last put on the block will always be at the top. Now, when you put these on here, make sure that you butt them up next to each other so that you don't have a space in between. If you leave a gap in between, then what will happen is that your block it will kind of grow, it won't lie flat. You don't want it to overlap, but you do want it to be, to butt up right next to each other. Let me add this. When you first start sewing on a new strip, after you've done one or two of them, cut it off, open it up, take a look to make sure you have the right sequence. A is always the black one. A, B, C, D. How many times I've made a mistake and I've put the black on the wrong end and then I have all these blocks that I have made incorrectly. If you check every time you uh, start out with a new color, a new strip, check the first one, make sure you have it right, then proceed with all 30 blocks. Okay, we're ready for the next one. We have A, B, C, D, and E will be on this side, right here. A, B, C, D, and here's E, and it's black. And again, just make sure that the last strip that you put on, which is black, is at the top. The last strip, the one that's unseen, be at the top. Now we have A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. F is a colored strip. So we will pour it, pull out some colored strips. One thing I like to do when I make these log cabin blocks is I like to put the Oh, um, brighter, 
fabrics in the center of the block, not on the outside. They just kind of stick out too much on the outside, but they work well in the in middle of the block. So, but this one is too close, and so I'll go on to this next one. So your oranges, red, lime green, that sort of thing might work out well right now. We have A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G comes next. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And G will be a colored strip. Now there is something that you can learn after a while. If you turn the block so that the unseamed one is at the top, and you know that this is where the new strip is going to come, you can tell that it's going to be a colored strip, not a black strip, okay? Time for the next uh, strip. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And you figure out what color that's going to be. That will be black, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So again, the, the unseamed strip is at the top. Okay, next round, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, another black strip. We're getting to the end, folks. We're all finished with the black. Now we have two more strips of colored strips to put in here. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. J will be a colored strip. And this is where it's fun to dig into the box and see what you can find that maybe you haven't. Oh, here's one I haven't used before. Hot diggity. Okay, uh, and here's another one. Yes, oh my goodness, this is great, great fun. Okay, so I, as I was pressing the last strips, I realized I didn't have a lot of blue. And so I'm going to look for some more blue and maybe some purple. And now that we're getting to the end, I really try to, oh goodness, there's a lot of orange here in this block. I really try to only use one color four times before switching colors. It just makes it so much easier when you go to uh, assemble the tote bag so that you don't have a lot of repetition. So again, the unseamed um, strip is at the top and you just go ahead and start sewing. One thing I want to point out is that if you come across one where it isn't exactly even, when you put it down on your strip, what you want to do is match up the main part, the center strip, and then those on the outside won't matter as much. I want to point out something to you. Here I have a multicolored strip, but I don't like this part, this brownish part. So I'm just going to cut that off and start with the colors that I do like. Well, we are done with the blocks and now it's time to assemble them. And so this is always a lot of fun, trying to get the right colors in the right place. And of course, after a while, you have to just kind of uh, change things around and that happens quite a bit. You think you've got it and then you decide, no, nope, that's not going to work and you change things around. What we want is seven rows, four in each row. And don't get too, um, too concerned about how it works out. Like see here I have two greens, so that's not going to work. I'll just try a different green. All right, uh, because 
it'll work out. You just, it takes a little bit of doing. But you go ahead and line it up until you have four rows, seven rows of four each. I have laid it out and now I want to make sure that I have these pathways, black and colored and black and colored and so on. And I think it's fine. I want to tell you a little secret though. The middle row is going to be the bottom of the bag. So if there are some blocks you're not crazy about, like this, I don't really like that. I have put it on the bottom bottom row because it won't be nearly as noticeable and then I'm going to label each of these um, rows one two three four five six seven and that will help when it comes to putting it together I'm going to stack them up like this and in a little bit you'll understand where I'm coming from or what my purposes are and then I have seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I have my first two rows right here. The others are down here where you can't see them, but I've put these up here so that I can show you what's happening. The first row will take the top one and then the one right next to it, butt them up like this and sew a seam. Now, I want to show you a little trick. Uh, you're not supposed to start sewing. I mean, you have to start sewing back in here, but I don't want to start back there. So I learned this trick from a friend of mine, uh, Jane, in our uh, core class. And so I put two blocks together. That way I can get started with this. And... Then row two, I'll take the same thing, the first block. The next one is right next to it and so on. Now you will notice that when you sew these blocks together, you will either have blacks together or like in this case, we had colored ones together. If you find yourself this way with a black and a colored, think twice because something's wrong. And it's very easy to get these switched. So be careful and try to keep them in the right direction. So I've done rows one and two. I'm going to continue with row three on down to row seven and have them all connected to each other. I'm not going to cut them apart. I've come to the end of my seven rows, so I'm going to put another ender. We call these leaders and enders, and snip it right there. Bring it back to the top. Cut this one off. And then I'm back to row one, where I have had the next one. the next one and so on I've come to the end of my seven rows but before I go any further I want to open it up and just check to make sure I didn't get any of the blocks twisted which is a very easy thing to do but it looks like all is well and I have <clears throat> several strips of four that this is just something that has nothing to do with the log cabins <laughs> tote bag. But this is what happens when you keep doing that. You get a whole bunch of these, put them together into squares, and you have uh, fuel for new projects. So now I'm going to iron these and then sew them crosswise.
You probably know this already, but remember that when you press them, you press the seams one direction on one row, press the seams the other direction on the next row, so that when you join them together, they will butt up against each other. So there you have it. And I'm quite happy with it. Next time, we'll show you how to turn that into a tote bag, okay? Now, if you would like to have an actual paper copy of this pattern, I have one on my Etsy store, which is Martha's Market, all one word, no apostrophe. And uh, so I have, I think it's $6. But anyway, it's 10 pages, PDF file, and you download them and print them out yourself. And that way you have a paper copy to refer to. But uh, if you can do it from the tutorial, more power to you. So we finished with that, and I actually got uh, three extra little things to add to my stash. All right, we'll see you next time.